Hey guys, Connor here. I apologize because the video that you're about to see was made uh, before I was completely aware of something that was made known about the recap of when certain rewards and stuff were being given out when it came to the reroll. Uh, prior to this, I wasn't aware of the fact that uh, the or one of the specific uh, lustrous tides, aka the standard banner pulls, were going to be given out at a later date than initial launch time, which does kind of put a wrench in a lot of the things that I mentioned here. Uh, I do think that the video brings up some good points, and I do think there is good merit to watching the video because it does go into things like the total economy of your pulls and things of that nature. But if you do want to kind of verify or if you do want to make this video make sense, would have to start the re-rolling process uh, a couple days later, aka I think 24th or even the 25th, depending on when we are given the free 10 pulls. Otherwise, you would have to basically pull or basically play the game for a little bit longer to compensate for or make up some of the additional uh, lustrous tides that you'd be missing. Long story short, though, either you would have to do something like get an earlier pull and kind of RNG your way into that sort of reroll, which is something that I'll mention later. Or you would have to use a couple of the, uh, I guess, the asteroids that you otherwise would have saved for the specific rate up banners to then compensate for the missing reroll material or, you know, reroll pulls that you would be aiming to get a five star with. Any case, uh, or in any case though, guys, I apologize. Uh, it's like literally the middle of the night as I'm making this. I didn't realize it, uh, and even my editor is not even awake right now. Uh, but I didn't feel that it would be fair to make this video uh, without making this PSA. I'm so sorry. I'm going to try and do better for next time. Back to the video. Are you wondering whether or not re-rolling is worth it in Wuthering Waves? Well, here's some updated info and something that I don't think a lot of people are considering. Before we actually get into the video, a couple things. Number one, thank you to individuals like Naroshio, alongside I am Riminus and Prideman once again because a lot of this information is verified and fact-checked via these channels. Beyond anything else, remember guys that although Wuthering Waves is coming out in a few days, a lot of the information and the preparation that people are doing right now are thanks to and based off of a lot of things from Closed Beta 2 and testers of Closed Beta 2. That being said, let's get into everything that we know. On a side note, guys, as a reminder, I am running a Battle Pass giveaway on my Discord. If you guys want to join and support the content, feel free to do so. If you're also looking to get additional pulls, which is something that you consider, feel free to enter in order for your chance to get a Battle Pass. Thanks again for all of you who have been supporting the content. I really appreciate it, and let's get back into it. Okay, now let's talk about the process of or what rerolling even is. Rerolling refers to the idea behind making an account, Accomplishing a specific goal or not accomplishing it the first time around, but recreating and or deleting an account and restarting it in order to achieve said goal. The most common form of re-rolling is when you specifically choose to delete an account so that you can get a specific character off of a banner, aka one of the five stars. But there is also another concept for re-rolling that I don't think many people have considered, and that's the idea behind re-rolling so that you get a 5-star in as few pulls as possible, something like getting a 5-star within your first 10 pull, which of course is unrealistic, but it is technically something you could do or set as a goal when you're re-rolling. Now again, on the topic, as you saw from Pridewin and a number of sources, the whole process of re-rolling takes around 30 to 45 minutes. To be clear, the 30 minutes is if you are an expert, you have no lag, there's no you getting up, and basically, if you were to do the math on it, if you were to reroll every single 30 minutes, you would have 48 tries to get the character that you wanted or the goal that you desired. But let's break it down a little bit further, because to be clear, you definitely have to do things like get up and use the bathroom, take a shower, sleep. So on average, if you were to say that you had spent the first day maybe 12 hours of rerolling, that's about 24 chances to get the desired outcome that you want, on day one of Wuthering Waves. Okay, now as we get into it, let's outline an actual goal for the reroll. Let's say for the sake of this experiment, you are trying to get 40 pulls so that you can guarantee a five star off of the first banner, beginner banner, novice banner, whatever you wanna call it. How many pulls do you get? Where do you get them from? How do you get them? And all of these questions and more are broken down based on this little spreadsheet here. As you can see here, if you are someone that is playing day one, there are going to be a number of ways for you to reroll, but just keep in mind that in terms of the different ways that you can get resources, you get one from the login event, presumably because you're just logging in for the first time, there's no way for you to get a day two or anything like that. If you recall, the live stream will also give you 10, so right now we're at a cumulative total of 11. In terms of the awakening journey, it is unrealistic for you to expect anything beyond level five when you're trying to reroll for an account. And with that in mind, specifically if you end up getting union level five, which you likely will gain access to once you also gain access to the gacha, you get five free pulls here. And so in total right now, we have 16 pulls. If we break it down a little bit more, 
Once you move to the pre-registration rewards, it says that you do gain access to 20 standard pulls as well. But to wrap things up, there are a couple ways for you to get the final four or so pulls that you need to maximize and or guarantee a pity for the novice banner. And that's through something like the gift shop using some of the asteroids, which is technically forbidden if you're a free to play player because asteroids should be used for the limited raid up banners. But deciding to use asteroid in this case or doing anything like committing a little bit to the awakening journey, doing some exploration so that you can unlock the rest of the lustrous tides from the gift shop. Any of these are great options to find the final pulls that you need to make up a 40 aka pity in terms of the novice banner. But at the end of it all, by the time that you go through the story, you do a little bit of exploration, you get through the rerolling process, and you will unlock the ability to pull for characters, you should be very, very close to, if not actually guaranteeing yourself a pity, and that's assuming that you're unlucky and don't pull one of the characters off of the beginner banner early. But you still may have the question, Connor, when do I unlock the ability to reroll? When can I restart my account? And I have the answer for you here. As you can see from this no commentary video, thank you again to Narushio, by the time that you complete all of act one, you should end up at this point in the story where you end up talking to Bai Z, and as you scale through and skip a little bit more, you will be left to your own devices, and right here, you actually gain access to the convene. Now, keep in mind that the calculations that I just did here were all with the goal of getting 40 pulls so that you can guarantee a pity and therefore guarantee a 5-star once per specific reroll of an account. But if you're trying to do something like guarantee that you get a 5-star even earlier or you get it earlier before having to pity on the beginner banner, your math will look different. But now we arrive at the topic of should you do it? And let me be the first to say, that you should not really care about what anyone else says if you want to do the reroll because you enjoy it or you want to have the best possible start as i know a couple of you probably play gacha games like that by all means don't take what i say use any of the resources or the things that help if anything but at the end of the day if it took seven hours but you want to do it that's totally fine that's up to you now while i have also seen a lot of people talk about the pulls and the total pulls that you have access to as a free to play something that i haven't seen talked about enough is actually the distribution between lustrous tides aka your standard pulls and the event pulls that you're being given for free as a free to play player now currently as you see here you have something like 96 standard pulls assuming that you clear absolutely everything you get 34 event banner pulls and around 23,000 asteroids that if you are a free to play should in 99% of cases be used and directed towards the event rate up banners but if you recall the pity for this game the initial beginner banner right now is 40 pulls and although this is still kind of vague and it wasn't answered we don't actually know if the initial 40 pulls go towards the total 80 that you need in order to guarantee a character or if you actually need 120 total lustrous tides in order to actually get to the point where you can choose a character of your choice of the five stars now i hate to keep bringing up a spreadsheet and talking about math but if you recall what we just mentioned earlier assuming that you cleared everything outside of some new events or some new drops that they give us randomly on launch or something like that the total lustrous tide pulls that you'll be receiving as a free to play is 96 and that means that you're going to have to find 24 lustrous tides or standard pulls from nowhere basically or use asteroids specifically in order to guarantee the five star character of your choice and that could be pretty problematic because the 96 that we're talking about right now is assuming that you get everything completed that's any activity, any end game, anything basically that you could think of on this list that Ribness has so graciously provided for us. You need to complete all of that and do things like get the login events, get all the pulls from the awakening journey. At your absolute maximum, you're still missing 24 total pulls. Now, to be clear, in a lot of cases, you could just argue that you could use a bit of your asteroid, aka the 23,000 that you have saved up as a free to play, assuming that you complete everything and get all of the income that Ribness has listed out here. But if you are someone that is a diehard, I only want to use the premium currency on raid up banners, you could very easily argue that now you're kind of confused on where the 24 is going to come from. The point of me describing this and kind of talking about this section was that if you want to be a bit more frugal or if you want to spend a bit more time rerolling so that you have more pulls and more lustrous tides initially so that you can compensate for the fact that you actually are missing about 24 total pulls if you are actually trying to get both the beginner pity and the selector pity, this could be an argument towards why you would actually reroll and save yourself some time.
As a quick side note, by the way, I know that a lot of people are praising Crow, and I also very much appreciate all the free and generous things that they've given to us, either through the pre-registration or the launch events, but something that I also saw Rivenous post and mentioned earlier is that the pity shop that a lot of people were talking about and praising about, oh, I can get a limited character, or oh, I can actually get a five star from here, assuming that I pull enough, is actually a bit flawed and a little bit unrealistic to attain and is more geared towards whales, but I just kind of wanted to touch on it real quick to kind of smooth your journey through Wuthering Waves initially, they're not quite as geared towards free to plays as you may think. I'll spare you the insane amount of math and detail that Riv had to do, although I very much respect him for doing so, but if you want to conclude this entire section, the important thing to note is that if you want to get, say, a specific featured and or limited character, you need to pull 2,182 times in order to actually guarantee this character. This is yet another thing you have to take into consideration if you're a free-to-play player because if you don't try to make the most out of your initial banners or your re-rolling You'll technically not have that easy of a time if you're specifically trying to get a rate-up banner that you missed And then you pair that with the fact that you also might not have enough resources to pull both your beginner banner and your selector Things are starting to add up and if you are someone that is trying to make the most out of your resources This is a legitimate concern that you could have although I do appreciate all the systems that they have again The resources the rewards no hate towards curl for even providing or giving us these systems but the point of this and all of the things that i just mentioned is that it's not so much geared towards the free-to-play players as much as the light spanners or dolphins who i'm sure that they are trying to attract in some capacity but let's talk about the characters who you should could would reroll for and the answer is going to be very simple pull for the character that you want ultimately this is a game where although you could argue that pulling for a character is really nice and also because I'm likely going to be making a tier list later, giving my more immediate thoughts, what I will say about a lot of the characters that you could reroll for is that outside of, obviously, Rover, who you get for free, all these characters are totally fine. Yin Yin and Jian are also, of course, on the limited rate up banner, so you don't actually have access to them. But if you want to play Kalcharo, he's a solid DPS, Encore is kind of the same, Zhang Jin is technically rumored to have a buff coming on release, Verena is one of the most ridiculous characters in the game in terms of being a support, she's kind of like Bennett and Chi Chi mixed into one, which is really ridiculous because she's a healer, reviver, and a damage increaser all at the same time. And finally, if you're a Ling Yang enjoyer because he's got cool looking lion dance aesthetic, or if you just want to play a character that does a bunch of punches or does a lot of aerobics, then by all means feel free to do that. But if it were up to me and something that I'm likely going to be doing or aiming for when it comes to my initial pull, I am going to be trying to get a character like Verena just because I'm a big enjoyer of the other characters, the four stars uh, or the limited rate up characters and Verena pairs very well with them, which is to say that although you could definitely get, again, any character like Kalcharo, Encore, Ling Yang, etc., feel free to pick the character that you enjoy or feel free to pick the characters that pair well with your future team compositions that you want to play and make you happiest when playing Wuthering Waves. And so that's everything you'll need to know when it comes to rerolling and Wuthering Waves, guys. Thanks to everyone that has supported and been helping me behind the scenes when it comes to setting these things up. And also, a huge thank you to all of you guys for watching. And as always, if you enjoyed today's content, feel free to leave me a like, a comment, a subscribe. Let me know what you're going to do when it comes to rerolling, and I'll see you guys all on May 22nd. I'll see you all next time. Good night.